Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about the right hand thumb rule. I uh, will talk about how it's applied in a biomechanical analysis, and I'll go through a couple examples. Um, so first off, what do we use the right hand thumb rule for? Um, so that is how we determine whether a torque or a joint movement occurred in the positive or negative direction. Um, so we have to use this rule and apply it to each individual joint um, during a movement analysis. And we can't make any assumptions about uh, being in the positive or negative direction just based on what the motion is or what other joints are doing. Um, so any joint movement can happen in the positive or negative direction uh, because it depends on which segment is moving. So like, for example, if we look at this picture here, in the box, we see the red torque plantar flexes the foot about the ankle and the blue torque plantar flexes the lower leg about the ankle. Okay, so if we look at these arrows, it's showing that these arrows are going in opposite directions, but both cause plantar flexion. The difference is, is the foot coming up towards the shin or is the shin coming down, um, or sorry, that would be dorsiflexion, uh, is the foot coming up towards the shin or the shins coming down towards the foot? In either case, that's dorsiflexion, but the movement is happening in opposite directions. Okay, so we can't just say like all hip flexion is positive or all knee extension is negative because it depends on which segment is moving in which direction. Okay, so how do we use the right hand thumb rule? So first thing is we need to determine what is the axis of rotation for that movement. So is it the X, Y, or Z axis? Um, so if we look at these pictures, we got somebody doing a hip sled or like a leg press and a squat. So both of these are primarily happening in the sagittal plane, and that would be around the X axis of rotation or the medial lateral axis of rotation. Okay, so first we determine the axis of rotation. Then we determine which segment is the one that's moving. Okay, so like in these pictures, let's take hip movement, for example. Um, in these pictures, the hips are flexing and extending during the different phases of these movements, but the bones that are actually moving, the segments that are actually moving are opposite. Okay, so, and actually I'll go through this example towards the end after we go through how to apply this. So we'll go, I'll use these as an example again. Um, so we need to determine which segment is the one that's moving between the two segments that make the joint. If it's a closed chain movement, we can assume that the proximal segment of each joint in that chain is what's moving. If it's an open chain, then we can assume that it's the distal segment of the, each joint in that chain that's moving. Um, so like, for example, if we look at the top picture with the hip sled or leg press, um, that's open chain. So the feet are freely moving. They're pushing out and back in again. So that's open chain. So in that example, it would be the distal segment of each of those joints that's the one that's moving. So if we're looking at the ankle, then that means the foot's the one moving. If we're looking at the knee, it means the shin is the one that's moving. If we're looking at the hip, it means the femur is what is moving. So the distal segment between the two that make up each joint. Um, for a closed chain, like a squat, then in that case, the distal segment is anchored. So it would be the proximal segment of each joint that is the one that's moving. So like at the ankle, it'd be the proximal joint would be, or the proximal segment would be the shin. At the knee, the proximal segment would be the thigh. At the hip, the proximal segment would be the pelvis. Okay, so depending on whether the end of the limb is anchored or not, that is how you will determine which bone is moving. It's the easiest way, because sometimes it can be hard. Like if we're looking at this squat and they're going up and down, it can be kind of hard to say, well, is it the femur or the pelvis? Because they're both moving. But if the feet are anchored, then we can say that it's gonna be the proximal segment for each joint that's, that's moving. All right, so now that we've determined what is the axis of rotation and which segment is the one that's actually moving, now you're gonna use your right hand, you're gonna wrap the fingers of your right hand around that axis of rotation with your fingers curling in the direction of the moving segment, okay? And that's where people get this wrong most often is that they're not curling in the direction of the movement, 
or they're not doing it according to the, the correct segment that's actually moving. So if you're doing it based on the wrong segment, then you're going to have the sign reversed. Okay, so you need to figure out which segment is moving and curl your fingers in the direction of the moving segment. So now, whichever way your thumb is pointing is telling you whether it's positive or negative. Um, so if the point, thumb points in the positive direction, then that was a positive direction of movement. If it's pointing in the negative direction, then the movement was negative. So which way is positive or negative? If we're looking at the x-axis, so the medial lateral axis, the right is positive and the left is negative. If we're looking at the y-axis, um, then superior is positive, inferior is negative. The z-axis, anterior is positive, and posterior is negative. So as long as you're wrapping your fingers in the correct direction around the correct axis, your right thumb is going to point to whichever direction, depending on the axis, and then you can determine your positive or negative. So I'm going to run through a couple examples here just to make sure that you've got this. So back to this example of the hip sled and uh, the squat. In both of these exercises, there is hip extension. So as we push out with the feet, that is hip extension. And as we come up out of the squat, that is hip extension. Okay, so it's the same joint, same movement, but they're different because the squat is closed chain and the leg press is open chain. So in the squat, so thinking about this squat, coming up out of the squat with hip extension, in that case, the pelvis is moving away from the femur. So it's the proximal segment of the joint is what is moving away from the femur. So in that case, we would curl our fingers um, in the backward direction, in, which is in the direction of the moving pelvis. Okay, so we're standing up out of the squat. So that would be backward movement of the pelvis, which would have your thumb pointing to the right, which is in the positive direction. Now think about the leg press or the hip sled. In that case, you're pushing out with the legs. Um, and so when you're going into hip extension, you would wrap the fingers in the forward direction because that's the direction the femur is moving. The femur is moving away from the pelvis as opposed to the pelvis moving away from the femur. So the femurs are moving forward. So you're gonna curl your fingers in the forward direction where the, the femurs are moving forward. And that would have your thumb pointing left, which is in the negative direction. Okay, so it's the same movement, it's a hip extension but we have opposite segments. So in hip extension, it just means the pelvis and femur are moving away from each other. But in one example, the pelvis moves away from the femur and in the other, the femur moves away from the pelvis. And so then we have to flip our hand around because we're following the direction of the moving segment, not the stationary segment. Okay, I have one more example for you. Let's take elbow flexion. So if we do a bicep curl, like in this first picture, or a chin up, like in the second picture, in both cases, we're flexing the elbows. But again, now we have a difference in closed chain or open chain. So in the chin up, it's closed chain. The hands are anchored. And as you're pulling up, you've got the arm, meaning the segment between the shoulder and the elbow, the arm is moving closer to the femur. So the arm is what is moving. So you'd curl the fingers in the forward direction, which is the movement of the arm towards the humerus, and the thumb would point left, which is negative. In the bicep curl, it's open chain. In that case, the arm is going to be stationary and the forearm is coming up. That's the moving segment. So it's coming up to meet the arm. So in that case, we're wrapping the fingers in that direction of the forearm movement and the thumb would point out to the right, which is in the positive direction. Okay, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.